It's time, guys. We're back with Doki Doki Literature Club Part 3. Last time, we uh, fed Yuri some chocolate, and it was uh, it was pretty nice. Uh, Sayori was getting a little bit jelly welly. Same with uh, Monica, so I think things are starting to heat up. And now you can see green screen activated. Oh my god, stuff is removed. Hopefully, imagine it's just like a green background and I'm not able to remove it. That would be really funny. Uh, we'll upgrade the webcam eventually, so uh, keep an eye out for that. But enough with my yapping. Let's get right into it. Also, these two saves were for thumbnails. Okay, I'm not playing different games. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. All right, here we go. We got to do uh, the third. I think this is the third poem, the one right before the uh, festival. So let's do this shit, baby. Uh, I'm unrestrained, melancholy, incongruent, disarray, variance. Oh my god, look at this. Oh my goodness. She's, she's, she's gonna love me, bro. You're, me and Yuri, it's, it's a match made in heaven, honestly. Oh shit, never mind. I think I, I, I choked that one a little bit, but it's okay. Let's look at this. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. I guess I don't know Yuri as well as I thought, but I mean, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, no? Like, come on now. Me and Yuri, bro, it's it's like it's like yin and yang. Wait, that's opposite. Well, you, they say opposites attract, so I guess I guess that could work. Um, No, but I definitely like Yuri the most as a character. She's just... I feel like I can relate to her a lot, like how shy she is and um, like the fact that she like she can't make up thoughts like on the spot. She got to think for a while because if you if you could tell when I try to do this stuff on the spot, my brain just like short circuits. I can't like actually say what I want to say. It takes me a while to actually how the why the fuck does Sayori like that one? Whatever. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. I've I've solidified their voices, guys. I'm pretty sure I have I, I have their voices locked. I'm pretty sure. I I hopefully hopefully I don't change it like five times. Don't worry. I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's going to be great. Wasn't she just complaining about how much she didn't want to like stand up and recite her poem in front of others? Now, now her like attitude completely changed. Eh? Where are you? Yeah, that's what I was about. To, I was just saying. Were you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. She got her priorities right. She got her priorities right. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Oh my god. Fried squid is an S tier food. Oh my goodness. Squid probably is my favorite. Favorite seafood, honestly, and I really like seafood, so. Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. If, if you've had fried squid, it's a game changer. You, you, you know you know what where Natsuki's coming from. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? Yeah, Monica. You, of all people? Huh? I, did, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Man Ika. Wait, what? Does that mean squid in uh, Japanese? Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Eh, <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Sayori, anybody home? Come on, baby girl. Eh? 
You're spacing out again. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You, you can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. I think I gave Sayori and Monica the same voice again. Fuck. Fucking hell, man. Listen, okay? Doing four different female voices would... It's, it's, it's a little hard, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not used to it. But once I, you know, get more comfortable with uh, the whole format of these videos, I'll, I'm sure I'll uh, do better. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Vin, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. So I'm assuming this is because uh, of our conversation yesterday where I said, if Yuri were to ask me to walk home with her, I would, even though I don't know where she lives. I'm assuming me and Sayori are neighbors. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Vin. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about the th things that bother her. Well, this time it's you that's bothering her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. And are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has part of uh, she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. So I, it took me a while, but I finally messed up on a reading segment. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that- Oh, well, she's just gonna tell me straight up. I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Vin. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Either our guy is brain dead or he's, uh... Extremely socially... Uh... Unaware. Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? I mean, she talks about food a whole lot. She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. Well, you haven't really spent that much time with her until recently, so how would you know? It's not any different now than it always has been. Eh, <laughs> you're so funny, Vin. Have you thought that Maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you. Did not think of that. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you can should just forget about what I said. Oh my god, guys. Um, I don't know if you experienced this, but you know that thing after you've exercised a lot where it feels like you're breathing out of your ears constantly? I don't... This is like a really... I, I, I looked this up, apparently like 2% of people have this, so probably a lot of you are gonna like think I'm crazy, but oh my god, I'm experiencing that right now and it's pissing me off. Oh my god. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. Actually, yeah, let me take a little break so I can fucking get rid of this. Sorry guys, I don't know if I have like a ear infection or what, but it's it's been like really bothering me lately. lately. Uh, I don't know if I read this already, but I'll just read it again. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, uh, 
Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Yeah, especially if you're uh, trying to be good friends with uh, Sayori. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice quiet so I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me to not worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Well, I'm assuming quite a bit. I mean, like I already said this before, but Sayori seems like a very, very good friend uh, to have your back. And if she's romantically interested in me, which I'm assuming she is, because uh, it's a dating sim, and I'm interested in Yuri. Ooh, this is a tough situation. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice- y Oh, so you are being watched. I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. Hey Yuri. Hi. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now, it's a little easier for me to do that now that we're so pointed and all. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, I mean, she's always deep in thought, so... Probably knows from experience. Well, it's something that I do a lot. So, it wasn't hard for me to spot, based on your posture and expression. Not, not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little bit off today. But when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to, admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Huh? S sorry. I didn't mean to see something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori have, and I have been fr just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little much. Yes. She said the same- Monica said the same thing. Then, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, uh, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Mm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside of her head. And she may not always know what she wants. So we all, I mean, we all can say like, you know, I want this, I want that. But deep down, do you really know what you want? Do you really know yourself? I noticed her strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a, person mis a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. 
Th that is, I, I think that she would be a very fortunate person. I know where this is going. I know where this is going. I wa I watched you on Netflix, okay? I know where this is going. How have you feel that way about her? Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. You know, I just like wanking my chicken every once in a while. No biggie. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Wait, what? I'm, oh, that, that part confused me a little bit. Anyway, as long as we're, we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Well, based off her smile, I'm assuming she's following the same things, you know, we've been telling her. Um, should we go with Sayori, try to try to cheer up a little bit? Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Well, now we know we lying. Maybe. That's not really what I meant though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Vin. Sayori, there's something wrong. Huh? Oh, sorry. Huh? Oh, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Heh <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. You insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I say anything, can say anything else, Sayori walks, cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Okay. So definitely seeing some strange behaviors with all of the club members. Something is about to happen. It's, it's up, again, like I'm saying, we're, we're, we're nearing the cliff and everything's just going to fall off. I, I can already tell. Um, since Sayori isn't here to get jealous, we're going to talk to you, Cherry, my, my baby girl. Then, your writing has only improved in these few, last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. I I is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. Oh, look at the smile. Look at the cheek. I remember you mentioned. Oh, I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe you're so good at something, and you've never even shared it with some it's with someone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, but oh well. Very smile sadly. Then, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could really say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway, but books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. Yeah, that's... I, I agree. I think stories are... Well, they're not only fun, and I mean, obviously, you gotta have some fun in your life, right? You can't work your, yourself to death. But also, like, stories inspire people to do better. Like, a good example of this is all this... this basically, every single superhero movie that ever existed right the the main character is always like noble 
self-sacrificing and has a lot of ideals that people look up to right and this can inspire people to do better you know maybe focus on a certain aspect of a character they really like and try to work up towards that right i think stories are not only important for you know entertaining people and making sure you enjoy life but also i think it's really important to learn and improve like your circumstances if that makes sense and and yourself as a person i don't know if you guys feel that way but that, that's how i feel about stories people you want to fall in love with or people you just know would make a really good friend cheerful people who always put a smile on your face or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life so when you look at it that way i'm surrounded by friends every day you know and those, those friends don't laugh at me, they don't tease me for spacing out all the time, they don't make fun of my body type, and and they don't ha hate me for acting like a know-it-all. I don't think she acts like a know-it-all, but people say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Vin. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. Well, bo normal is boring anyways. I mean, you gotta be normal and like, at least somewhat to, you know, be around people in a functioning society, but normal is boring. I don't even know how to make myself happy. Well, books seem to do the trick, so. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write, but it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, and that I really understood what was missing all this time. Yeah, this guy, this is making, this is like touching my heart. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm feeling some, some type of way right now. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Vin. I wouldn't say that. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. I, could, I feel like I can relate to Yuri a lot. And it's definitely, it's definitely nice when people um, like get on the same page as you and try to understand you. It's, it's very, very nice. Well, I treat you like how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And other if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. Really, we really are friends now, aren't we? Oh, look at her little, look at her little smile. Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah. I do. Let me get it for you. Oh, Ghost Under the Light Part 2. Let's do this, guys. <laughs> Ghost Under the Light Part 2. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses the path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the sheet light. Street light. <laughs> sheet light? <clears throat> I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is, a, is the amber light flickering against his outstretched, his outstretched arm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart. Teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. 
I touch his hand. Flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Ah, uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Do, despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it was a fi hard to figure what this one was all about. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. I got the gist, Yuri. So, is my character gonna like make a move or is he just gonna make this whole situation awkward like how I would do in real life or what? That's fine, I understand this one. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but... You can all definitely tell that if you've watched the uh, last two uh, videos of Doki Doki. I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her. I feel like... Come on, bro. You know the poem is about you. You know she feels, you know, something. This is where you gotta make the move. Like, th this is like the, the, the greenest of lights. And I was just kind of like, oh, I like spending time with you as a friend. Like, what the, what the fuck is my character doing, bro? I want to bag Yuri. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can, um, the poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean, I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor sometime. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me, and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. And I don't give a fuck about these characters, TBH. No, just kidding. I like all the characters, honestly. Like, if we're, if it wasn't a dating sim, and you know all the characters weren't jealous, uh, that these uh these characters are really well written. I I I'd like to think of them all as uh, good friends, but. I have a feeling the story is not going to pan out that way. Hi, Ben. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, Ben. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more in the, more words in the past couple of days than she's talked in the whole year. <laughs> Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Uh, that's... Uh, it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Well, I mean, there's only four people to spend time with. So... But, you know, there's obvious reasons why yours is my favorite. Reading that edgy novel with her? Well, I just... I feel bad that she, has a hard time, that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure that she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? Alright, alright, I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. I, 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 I got you. I'll treat, I'll treat Yuri with respect, okay? Her books aren't a total escape from reality, they're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Yeah, that's what I was getting. I, I thought she, that's what she was getting at. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. 
If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. Oh my goodness. Hold up. Let me... Let me take a break before I read this shit. My eyes hurt. My eyes hurt. <laughs> Ow, that shit actually kind of hurt in the throat. The lady who knows everything. An old tale of a lady who wanders earth. A lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every, ever, every answer, all meaning, all purpose, all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The le Wait. A email reference? The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. So one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look into her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Her legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know... Oh, my bad. Oh, you know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. I agree. Not to get too philosophical, philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. Uh, I feel like I feel like I do, but my my thoughts are kind of just like I don't, I'm not really trying to find the answers to like life's questions. I just like think about it. it just I don't know. It, it's it's like sort of comforting almost. Uh, if that is uh we are not in a way, it's almost paradoxical because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? I uh, that could very well be the case. You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Well, I mean... I feel like... A lot of creative endeavors... End up that way. Like... Bittersweet, maybe? Uh, are, aren't you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay... We wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? That, that, that That's true. Also, you know that thing where... Um, I don't know what it's called, but uh, like wins are emotionally half as strong as losses are. Even if like, like let's say you gamble and you win a hundred dollars, that feeling is half the intensity as if you lost a hundred dollars. So even if the good, the good and bad in the world is 50, 50, or even if there is more good than bad in the world, you're still going to feel the negative things more. And, and people like highlighting the negative things more because it's just easier and more it, it, it uh it sparks more intense emotions like if you look at the news lots of fear mongering right lots of it's never like oh this local bakery you know helps feed you know these homeless children or some, something like really you know nice sweet right it's always about the bad things going on in the world and while you do need some of that you know to stay informed and whatnot if you do everything like if you focus on everything negative you know your life should be miserable so you need to find a balance but that's why i think that uh most creative things are like sad in nature humans aren't two-dimensional creatures i think you know that better than anyone i'm sorry guys i do not know how i missed the meta joke Obviously, they're joking that the you know she's two dimensional because it's a game, and I missed it. I missed it completely. I'm sorry. You mean one dimensional? 
Ah, uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Ooh, let's get into it. Let's do it. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you've put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll, focus, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own lit literature club, little literature club, don't you think? That's what I'm trying to do with this channel, right? Build a community of like-minded individuals. Let's see where it goes from there. And I said something about that last episode, I'm pretty sure, or last video of Doki Doki. I said something about you should gotta put your work out there because especially if you want to work like 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 your job you want your job to be something creative you gotta put your work out there because if you don't how people can discover you and it might be hard at first but i mean you just gotta get started and i'll say it again uh, my first video on uh, it's still up if you guys want to see it it was completely dog shit it was complete dog ass the audio was terribly mixed my commentary was really lame and boring uh i struggled to you know, put my own thoughts into it, uh, into to it, and the oh bitrate was all goodness. out of whack. But you know what? There, people like watch that video. They said, "Hey, this video is pretty dog shit." But I could tell them what this guy's going for and the vision that he has. So I'm gonna support him. And if if you look at that video, it's almost all positive comments. It might all be positive comments, even though the video is completely dog shit. But if you start, and even if you start poorly, if you find people that like what you're doing, like, like they have like, they, they can understand what vision you have and like what you want to be, what do you want to become, they'll support you no matter what. So that's, uh, that might be comforting for people who uh, might think that their work is bad, but your work is not nearly as bad as you think it is. Uh, you're your own worst critic. So that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright, Natsuki, what's good, my girl? Meh. I guess you really haven't learned anything after all. Honestly, I don't know why I got my hopes up in the first place. What happens if you, like, write Yuri style the first time, and then Natsuki's the next time, and then Sayori's the third time? I will do a playthrough play like that. What? I didn't think this one was that bad. What did I do wrong? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't either, don't bother trying to write poems like this until, until you're on Yuri's level. Atsuki stops short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not try, just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? Keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty... Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean... I mean... Uh, looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed, back, handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't the girl I was really trying to impress in the first place. So, her, her, uh, what she said was valid. But still, I don't know why she said all that. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Ca catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common. It foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Why well, I tell you guys, we are, are right now. If this was a Looney Tunes episode, I am already over the cliff. All I need to do is look down, and the story's gonna go. Brrr. 
In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing that's dif different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, uh, it seems you're right. Uh, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh my god, Natsuki's voice killing me, bro. Ah, we, ah, we. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well. Went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Out of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Huh? I don't know what to say when that, that dialogue came up. It was... <laughs> that curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Oh, what did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out... Wait, who said that? I don't, I don't know. I thought it was me. Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. That city will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! As, and as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Shit, I forgot what Monica's voice was. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um, make tea? Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? Uh, I- <laughs> Oh, that's relatable. I'm useless. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. No, Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I could tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. I feel like all the girls are important to the club in some sort of way. Like, like if Natsuki wasn't here, you'd miss all the like snappy remarks and you know her her snarky attitude. If Yuri wasn't here, you know, you you, you I mean you miss the most talented person, right? Uh, well, that Monica said that, not me. If Monica's not. I mean, she's literally the leader, so you know. And then Sayori's not here, and you can tell the effect that's having. Ah, uh, that. May be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. True that. So Yuri, you have some beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Vin. The one who is truly useless. Ah, uh, don't say that. In fact, you can Oh, I get to help one of them. Oh my goodness, my galaxy brain. I mean, I, I know the text appeared before I thought that, but I was thinking that I just didn't get time to say that. My galaxy brain, I, I can predict things before it even happens. Oh my goodness. Both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really be appreciative of that. Listen, Monica. Hell no, I'm not helping you! Why are you smoking? I'm helping Yuri. Come on now. Come on now, guys. What, 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 why would she even say that? She knows what I'm going to pick. That. Is Monica suggesting I spent the weekend with one of my club members? Yes, she is. How on earth are they are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you know, even if you don't know how to bake, which I don't, I don't know how to bake or cook. There's always some dirty work I can give to you. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. 
Um, if I can recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Vin may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. You know, Yuri, I'm gonna go with you anyway, but she's trying to persuade the other, other uh, members of the club. We're bagging Yuri, we're bagging Yuri. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like you're just making excuses for Vin to- Okay, so that's- I thought Natsuki completely hated my guts, but even if you go with the Yuri pathway, it still seems like she likes you somewhat. What? what are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. Oh, I actually know that word. Hell yeah. And paying isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Vin to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? Oh my gosh. So I'm sure he's interested in- You literally- You literally just said that! I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Vin, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. What what would what say? What would say? Yuri even do? I mean, I'm pretty sure they have phones at this time, right? They could just shoot her a little text. Well, come on now, guys. <laughs> Is there really anyone else to pick? Well, I'll probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're going- You're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying- Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri out then, Vin? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. Well, I mean, can I just help them all out? Like, like, help Yuri out with- you know, finishing the decorations, then move on and help Natsuki out, maybe, and then help out Monica, or have Sayori help out one of them. I mean, I know why they want me to help them out, but still. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. Horny more- Oh. Shit. My bad, my bad. <clears throat> what was I thinking? What, what was I thinking? I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Vin? Me? Ah, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it will turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Vin picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing I do for the event will bear to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Damn, they're making a really big deal out of this. Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. Oh, she's owning up to her mistakes. Wow. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I, I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica are also, is, are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Ooh, I see. Even if it didn't work out perfectly, I could tell she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event! Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah, 
I have to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Squad out. All right, let's get out of let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, huh? I turn around. Sorry, I realized that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Here's my number. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. What? Wait, I thought... W okay. I don't know, because I, I joined the club and I didn't make a... Well, because my club was esports, so we made a group chat on Discord, because, you know. But with other clubs, I thought you, like... Especially with a small club like this, maybe not like a big club, but like a small club like this, don't you usually just make a group chat like off rip? I don't know. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. You're in uh, uh, exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I'd be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Yeah, I thought that'd be uh, better, but maybe she got some. She got her parents over or something, I don't know. Ah, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to her your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. Well, I mean, okay. So obviously there's a reason why everybody grows up the way that they grow up, right? I mean, there's the whole psychological thing is like nature versus nurture, where nature is like your genes and stuff you can't control. And then nurture is like the environment you grow up in. So Yuri obviously must have some terrible parent, or maybe not have terrible parents, because you can have you can have like shy kids with with good parenting. But like I'm getting the feeling that if she wants to go to my house, her parents are probably you know bad, and her parents are probably like super like controlling of the way she speaks and acts. So she's afraid to like do anything. I'm not a I'm not a psychologist. Obviously, I'm literally just a college student. But, uh, that's, that's what I'm getting from this, so, and I can definitely relate to that, too, because I feel like, not a trauma number or anything, but, like, every, I feel like every time I try to do something, like, that, that I like, just for me, my parents just always, always find a way to, like, just make my time just completely fucking miserable and make me, like, second-guess myself for everything. But anyways, enough about, enough about that. It's not like it should matter m much either anyway, so I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Finn. I think that will make a very productive team. Well, um... I don't know how much production we're gonna really be doing. <laughs> but, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, a good team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Hell no, Yuri. Are you are you spoken? Come on now. You know why I picked you. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I, I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Uh, I, I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. You believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort. Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. I know I am. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door, and Yuri follows. I can't believe this! Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. <laughs> that might look really stupid on camera, but I don't care, it was funny. <laughs> More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this a chance I have to make something happen between us? 
bro, you could have, you could have just, dude, her poem was literally about you. It was very, very romantic. I mean, she writes pretty romantically anyways. But still, but still, you could have just made a move right there, there bro. You could have just... <laughs> Not like I'm much better, but I mean, I've never gotten that far, like, in, in a situation like that. So, uh... I, I don't know what I would have done. But hopefully I'm not doing that bullshit, bro. I could have just went for it. Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. Oh, I can't wait either. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's beautiful. Now, if I could just do this in fucking real life, that would be great. But uh, I guess I'll settle for um, myself and Doki Doki being, being good at texting with girls. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning no more about her. But putting Yuri aside, oh, I, I thought they would tell me a few things about her, like her home life or whatever, but I haven't heard a thing since from Sayori since she left club early the other day. That's not good. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but oh, you have her number? We just text her, bro. Or text Monica because you should have made a group chat at the very first day and tell her to text. Sayori asked for help for either her and Natsuki. But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Well, aren't you neighbors? Can't you just knock? Oh, there we go. It's a very smart decision. Wait, no, this is not smart. This is not smart. Why are you doing it right before Yuri comes over? You could have done it yesterday, bro. My guy is a little bit slow. He's little, he, he might be on the short bus. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot that in Japan, you know, they got a lot less weirdos kidnapping children. So it's probably more likely that they can just leave the front door open. Um, in their house. Again, we used to play so often that we've made a habit, habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're fam, like, like we were family. Well, at a certain point, you simply just become family with your friends. Come on now. But in this case, it's obviously different. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she... Oh, fuck me, dude. I don't know what that said. I'll, I'll slow it down for you guys so you can actually read it. And I'll, I'll go back and reread it when I'm editing it. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I usually find her. Sayori. Oh, look at this. Oh, this room is cool. Okay, look a little, little, little. Uh, this is where I put my gaming PC. Oh my God, bro. If I had my PC in my room, holy shit, bro. Oh my God. It'd actually be amazing. I mean... If I can make this a full-time job and move out, then, you know, I can put it wherever I want and have privacy. But my room, my fucking, the reason I have a green screen is because my, my PC is literally in the fucking family room, bro. Literally where everybody is, bro. Like, oh my God, bro. It's so annoying. I wish it was in my room. But anyways, you know, PC here. I got a little, little nice little bed. My bed is very, very big. Uh, it is full of stuffed animals. Actually, I have so many stuffed animals that I have a... You know those plastic fold-up tables that they have at events? I literally have one right next to my bed to put more stuffed animals on it. I have so many stuffed animals. Got big Mr. Mr. Cow here. Uh, little little birdie here too. This is, a, this is a pretty cool room. Sayori? Hi, Finn. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. Damn, this music is very, very bittersweet. But it's definitely, it's definitely fitting the mood. It has been a long time. 
Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. Bro, no way you're calling this mess. I mean, it's not the most like clean and organized, but this is not... Come on now. I mean... She could organize it a little bit, but this is not crazy. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and water decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you oh it. Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Sayori so had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. Oh, because they can just like print the the uh, flyers or whatever. But I feel like that's kind of lame, bro. If you're like, if you're in a club, I mean, esports different because you know you can't have three setups in one room usually, uh, unless you use school setups, which are complete dog ass. But I feel like for for any other club, meeting a person just makes everything like so much more fun. Like, I don't know. I like, I like chatting in person. It's very fun. I like it a lot. Although I don't really get to talk to people one on one or like in small groups, which is where I feel like I thrive the most. I really like just very, very small like groups, like even just one or two people, even if it's not like romantic or like, cause, cause it does, definitely does not have to be uh, like if you're just with, with one other person, it's just, I don't know. I, I definitely uh, am more suited for those type of interactions. But anyways. We didn't plan a meetup or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. So Yuri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing after you left on Friday. But something's wrong. You can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Vin. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? Well, people grow up and people change, so... You can never really... Um... And that... And, like, relationship dynamics change, too. I mean... There's... I feel like you can really never get back to the point where like it once was in childhood. Like me and my best friend, for instance, I mean, I still consider him my best friend. We haven't talked for almost a year now, honestly. It's it's because I, I moved states and then he was my best friend in that state. And I moved back to the state I'm currently in and we started like losing contact. And you know, he's he's got a job now. He's in trade school. Uh, and I'm doing college and I'm doing this thing, you know? People grow up, people change, and you know, your relationship dynamics also have to change. It's a hard reality, you know? Um, especially, you know, cause I mean, I had a lot of fun in my childhood. I, I mean, I feel like everybody did. And then you just kind of have to accept the fact that, you know, things have to, ha have to happen, have to change. And it's uh, pretty sad. This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. Yeah, I definitely... Um, I mean, obviously, we're experiencing the story through our character's perspective, but I mean, obviously, I think everybody has been in a situation where they really like this person and then, you know, they don't like you back and they choose to go with somebody else. And in this case, it's right in front of your face. It's in the same club with your friends that you've been friends with for a long time, right? Or at least 
at least close to. Um, yeah, that, that that shit sucks, man. It, it it hurts a lot. So I definitely understand where Sayori is coming from, and it definitely takes time to just like move past that. It's not something you can just move past in one day. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori, I grab Sayori by the sh shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So, tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh, uh. Sayori gives me an empty smile. Dude, this is making me really sad. I'm not gonna lie. You really put me in a trap, Vin. But, you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? Eh... You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you? But oh shit. Oh, this is... Going to get awkward very quickly. I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is... I've had really bad... Oh shit. And we're getting into... The realist, the very realistic parts of life. I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. Yeah, it's, that's definitely relatable sometimes. Uh, what reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? That's also pretty relatable. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I want to make everyone- I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. Yeah, that's uh... Remember when I said Sayori's the most relatable character? Yeah, that's, I can definitely see why. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to comfort people in these in these types of situations. It's, I mean, I I, I always like people can always tell you how to how to do it, like right, like oh, just be there for the other person. You know, you don't have to like try to figure out a solution to their problems. But it's I I don't I I am not very good with comforting people. So how is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Well, people are pretty good at hiding these things, especially if they have practice with it. Or maybe you just you know I mean you guys drifted apart, right? So that's another reason. Did she really want so badly for me to not? Think about, just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. That's what friends are for, right? All you had to do was just tell me. You don't understand at all, Vin. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. I can, I, I feel like I can relate to like making it, trying to make everybody happy and not really like putting your own needs second um so I, I don't know maybe that's why it's this is hitting me uh especially hard 
That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <sighs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Vin. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is as if everything could be like it always was. And that's not possible. Because it's life. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now that you came here, and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Oh, my bad. I keep accidentally hitting right click. Uh, uh, Vin. Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Vin. Sayori isn't hu hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She stops sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Oh shit, I, again, I'm gonna need to freeze frame that. Please don't do this, Ben. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you want to, if you have it in yourself to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Vin. Yeah, that's also really hard. When you feel really bad and you don't understand what you want, because I mean, it's kind of hard to know what you want until you have it, right? The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. Festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um... Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. Because you've never been in that situation, so I mean... You can't fully understand what people are going through. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. Oh, this festival. There's going to be a lot of things happening at this festival, huh? 
Shit. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach- oh, the music came back. The uh, default music. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Uh, oh look, she got, she got a sweater this time. Dope. Ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You could- you always could have te just texted me. I mean, don't you usually just text people and then go up to the doorbell? That's what I do. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried on more on my way home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Ooh, here's my room. PC setup. Got a little like, uh, what is this? A little like Lisa Queen. Got my little closet. Got a lot of books for some reason. Oh, wait. But there's these are only like manga books. Isn't my character only in a manga? Why does he have so much, so so many books? And no stuffed animals. Sad. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around. Curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. Uh, I cleaned it yesterday. Cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be in mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Yeah, come on, Yuri. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, ooh, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure <laughs> she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that... Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know. Mood lighting. A What the fuck is that? I'm sure I'll put the definition up. Aromatherapy candles? Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity and for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something I like about you, actually. Is that so? Then that makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need, to, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri, Yuri rummages around through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder, cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be pretty neat. What's that wooden thing though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. I guess I'll put that on the screen too because I have no idea what the fuck that is. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Well, considering I don't know the definition, not, not at all. Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. Oh, I'm learning. You can even feel it permeate through your body. 
relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder, presses, pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a t thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. I'm glad she's not using it for medication, but you know, just that's what essential oils are for, you know, making everything feel nice. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and it helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. Well, I'm glad she's enjoying herself. That's, that's a good sign. Uh, she reaches again. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well... Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for, folding, for folding origami. Oh? What I- Oh shit, Spacebar does that too. What I- What did she say? What I'd like to do is write a word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Dude, I my fucking Spanish teacher made me do this shit. I thought it was stupid when I had to do it, but um, if you're likes it, then I guess I like it too. Then we could fasten the paper onto ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. Yeah, this girl knows her. She sh knows her shit, bro. Yuri knows her shit. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Yeah, she doesn't seem to be, like, stammering or, like, apologizing constantly. She seems in her element. Or maybe it's just the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Vin. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, uh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she cuts into- reaches in her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The r knife is strangely beautiful. Silver handle has- an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. I'm not like a collector or anything, but I feel like having a pocket knife or like a Swiss army knife with um, decorations would be, would be cool. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well. Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. And when have I ever thought something was a weird theory? Come on now. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. It's it's sort of like... I, I do understand this. Like Maybe, maybe people will understand this, but I, I do understand this. Because the same thing like fire. Like... Fire is very destructive, obviously. Arsonists use it, obviously. Can, can be very damaging. But in a controlled setting, and in, I mean, sometimes not even in a controlled setting, it looks very, very nice. It's very nice to look at. Um, and the destructive elements sort of add to it. It's like adds a little bit of a different element to it. It's really weird to explain. But that I, so I think it's the same way with knives because obviously knives can do a lot of damage a lot, a lot of damage but um that's one of the aspects that makes it really unique and beautiful so i i do understand i can't help it i don't know what it is the cause 
combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger. Oh, I didn't even get into that. Yeah. I mean, people who uh, make knives uh, also take a lot of time. Especially if it's a very good knife. So that's also. And the attention to detail is also adds to it. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hand hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. Oh man, I wish we could have like, seen our character hold it up. That would be that would be cool. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? I mean, they're in Japan. And ja Japanese craftsmanship is... Uh, I mean, have you seen Japanese cooks? Their knives are pretty, pretty, pretty good. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow. <laughs> oh, my character, bro. He's... Again, I told you, I think he might be a short bus, just like me. Finn, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. It's a fucking knife, are you I barely touched it at all. It it's my fault. I should have warned you. The knife is extremely sharp. It could cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Is she into medicine too? Because that would be absolutely crazy. Ah, uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah, uh, without warning. This I did not expect. Um, I, I was going to say something. I was going to say that if Yuri was in like, um... A fantasy setting, which I guess this is a fantasy setting, but like a fantasy setting where you like, you know, like good and bad, you got, you heroes got to take down the bad guys, right? With their, their powers. I could see Yuri as like, as like a doctor. She got like a whole stature and the vibe of a doctor. So I was gonna say, if she like was interested in medicine, I could kind of see it, but it'd be a bit of a stretch. I did not expect this though. Without warning, Yuri puts her my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but it kind of turned me on. Oh. But I guess she was trying to just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I think Yuri's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't expect that either. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. <laughs> Finn! Did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the, ja the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Finn. Yuri giggles shyly. Huh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. Well, I mean... I see. That's relieving. Tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door cutter. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Why do I sound like that? It looks great. <laughs> ah, thanks. 
It's just something I saw online, really. Oh, she's a Pinterest girl. I see. Are you ready to move on to our next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. Ooh, just like the sixth grade. Or fucking high school for some reason. Because even though I originally wanted to major in math, they made me take art for some fucking reason. Why the fuck do I need to take art in high school if I'm gonna need to be majoring math, you stupid cu- We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Ooh, I learned about that in chemistry. Which, again, I shouldn't be taking if I'm going to be majoring in math. Why the fuck is that a gen ed? Taking Yuri's advice. I decided to use the small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a paint to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri uh, quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, uh, no, not at all. I mean, she is wearing a sweater, so... There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly uh, dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So... I thought we'd do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, then nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium in f at the front of the classroom. I mean, with how smart she is, she could probably just come with a quote like off, the, off rip. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After Yuri rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner. Serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Stop and smell the roses type, you know, type moment, you, know, you feel me? Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. I agree, I like keeping it calm and low-key. In fact, I usually don't even want to. Well, actually, I say that, but like, it depends, you know? You know, sometimes I, I want to go out and do something crazy. Sometimes I want to just keep it low-key, but most of the times, I want to keep it low-key. Like, what I do in my free time is play story games, except... I stopped doing that because I wanted to play them on the channel for you guys. But don't worry, once I finish this game and then finish another game, that I can play those games in my free time. Yes, I, oh my god, it's so great that I like replaying the same stories over and over again. They should do that, bro. In the future, bro, I'm telling you right now, just create a device that makes it so you can erase certain memories. Because cause, cause you know what I do, right? Is I just erase like like doki doki literature club and then i experienced the whole game all over again oh my goodness imagine imagine that in fact oh wait i already read that it i just like when i can spend time with one other person i said that earlier even if it's something simple like reading it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much yeah i can i can see that i i feel like i wouldn't like reading with one other person i mean i guess it's just because i don't like reading but my the equivalent to that for me would be just walking i i really like just walking with one other person and just talking to them or sometimes you know you just walk in silence it's pretty relaxing just having a friend next to me makes things feel a bit nicer don't worry guys we're gonna put a b o y in front of the friend i think that's all it takes for me to be happy is that so i'm also i'm also very uh i 
I I'm pleased by the small stuff. Eve of Fury and I are okay, so we're so our main character is, or our character is not like that, but I am like that, so. Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about my bad guys, I keep double clicking on accident. About things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I feel like that's why um, story games are pretty popular on YouTube. I mean, not only Cub Scouts, Gloom, Cory Kenshin, Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, right? They, other you, big YouTubers, right? They all play like story games and I mean, people do watch it for for the personality, but I mean, I've also seen like very small creators blow up their channels or uh, or smaller creators play story games and those videos blow up because people like sharing the experience with somebody else. Like even if I've already seen the story or played through the story myself, I still want to, you know, just relive it uh, with somebody else, you know, and I feel like that's why these uh, these videos do so well. I'm not doing th these videos just because I think they'll do well. Uh, I, I just really like story games, so. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Kia? I, I don't know what to say for that. Kia? So sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I... Oh, sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, uh, your face. There are droplets. Oh, shit. Hopefully it does not get over this very nice sweater. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with wa hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Oh, new scene! Her eyes look completely different in this one. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait, eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Yeah, hot hot towels. Woo. They feel great, man. Ah. Uh, oh, ah. Uh, I keep my hand st still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently. Oh wait, what? Oops. What did my arm look like? Oh look at me, I'm skinny just like real life guys. Hell yes. If you're wondering why I wear so many layers of clothing, it's because I'm skinny as fuck, bro. I might be fucking anorexic, bro. I have no idea. Oh, did I already read that? I'll read it again. She breathes gently, half through her slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? I like the blur in the background, it gives it a nice nice touch to the, the whole scene. Yuri's Jet. I like everything about this game, bro. I, I don't think I've complained about a single thing. Which, I mean, I guess I had said the pacing was a little slower than what I'm used to, but I mean, if it's a story, so... Shit, I think I just like this game, guys. I, I don't know if that's crazy to say. Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist sent a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah, uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. Me too, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I feel like the jasmine is not really helping us focus, guys. <laughs> I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just inspired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than it oh, I think it came out better than I expected. 
I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add to the lettering now? Ah, uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. Yeah, true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Whew! Ah, uh, you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? I was enjoying myself a whole lot here. Why don't we ex extend this, you know? Go for a little walk outside in my neighborhood, you know? Maybe hop in my whip, you know? Get, go get some, uh... I don't know, get some ice cream or something, you know? Come on now. Ah, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. She looks like she believes me, so... I'm glad for that. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Oh, she can cook? Shit. I would love to be able to cook, but uh... Nope. Ah, uh, so you don't have any time left? Oh, God damn it. Ooh. I was secretly hoping that we'd have a little extra time after finishing the work. Well, oh, I mean, we could cook together, you feel me? I didn't know what time it was, that's why I suggested ice cream, but, you know, we could cook, a, you know, you could show me a little bit of things, you know, we could have a nice little, nice little, I'm sure I have something in my fridge, I got some rice, you know, we could, uh, cook some rice, you know, make some, uh, make something nice. Well, here are things to herself. I, oh, Fuck. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. Well, in that case, can I go back with you and maybe cook something up, you know, for the both of us? You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. Okay, never mind. At least, at least we're on the same page. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. Dude, I'm- my dialogue is being really slow right now, I'm- uh, this video is gonna be like an hour and a half long, <laughs> I'm sorry guys. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all our things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. Please, bro, listen, anime vid, bro, I'm telling you, just ask to spend more time with her, bro. She likes you. Just, just ask for it. Ask and you shall receive, my boy. Please. I understand why. It sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend with, t spend time with friends in the relaxed environment. Oh wait, but if the thing about her parents is true, then um, she's probably not gonna want to for us to be at her house. Uh, I mean, you can still ask though, but that doesn't mean this is the last time it could happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I was, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. I, I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say it without thinking. About today. Oh, about today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Come on, please, Vin, lock in, please! Okay, it wasn't what I was thinking, but you know what? This was a good dialogue option. Because we can do this again. Oh! Oh, that's... That was the correct dialogue option. We are in there. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can hang out somewhere. I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Vin. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Woohoo! I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Eh? Ah, uh, hi, Vin. Sayori, 
just now we weren't eh, it's okay then i just stopped by to say hi um well it's nice to see you i'm sorry but i'm already on my way to leave oh really that's too bad i'm sorry but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow so so that's fine right of course Sayori beams. Y yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. What the hell? I'm getting an Amber Alert? You know that one video by RDC World that's like what they expect you to do when you get an Amber Alert? <laughs> yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Because like, yeah, I like... That sucks, but like, what am I supposed to do, bro? I'm 18. Like, come, come on, bro. I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. How close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Vin? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Vin. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes really makes me happy. It's something I wouldn't trade for anyone else. Anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. Put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. Reassure her. I'm scared, Vin. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Oh... Say Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Vin... I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... And... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? I don't even remember that. Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings. I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. Oh, shit. Okay. So, obviously, Sayori, very depressed. Uh, this is obviously going to be very hard for her to, you know, really accept. But... If you are in this situation, do not lie to the person. It will make everything worse. While it may make things better temporarily, it, it, it it's never the the right path. So I'm assuming this is romantic, and this is friend, like the friend pathway. Even though I do say I love you to my friends, I don't think that's what they mean in this context. So. I'll say this, even though I know it's gonna hurt. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll... You should... But try, but I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I, I see. 
Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Uh, is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time there's th that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. So, just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Vin. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sayori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Um... Ah! Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. Sorry guys, I can't scream in a girl voice. Um, you're definitely gonna get used to that. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile for running, turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in the front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is help is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. Yeah, I I don't even know what like there's no right answer here. There's no like one like way to help her through her her issues. I mean, it's just going to suck for a while. Like there's not much you can really do besides be there and just, you know, try to try to, you know, just care for her. I mean, if we talk to the other club members, see, try to get them to cheer her up. I don't think it's going to do anything. Yeah, it's, it's just a really shitty situation. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't even know what you're supposed to do here. I'm going to give it everything I got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. It's the day of the festival. Okay. That is a good place to stop. Because I've been recording for a while now. And yeah. And so it was a lot of stuff. Um, damn. This video that or this uh this part of the story hit fucking hard bro this shit oh my goodness gracious hold on let me let me save the game real quick bang bang uh damn i did not expect that shit to be to hit that hard like holy shit at first you know it's kind of the same thing you know just you know just me being silly just trying to wife up yuri you know but this whole Sayori thing is damn that shit hurt bro that that shit is painful I mean I don't think I'm depressed or anything but I've definitely had like days like that where just like you know you don't want to get even get up or eat or do anything just because you feel like complete dog shit and most of the time you don't even really know why you're feeling that way you don't understand your feelings at all and even if people try to comfort you it's not really much you, they can do because you can't even do stuff yourself, you know? It's, it's, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I feel like it was a really accurate, um, obviously I never had depression, so I can't really say with 100% accuracy, but I th think that was a really accurate way to, 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 uh, depict somebody being depressed. And, uh, yeah, the whole thing about me rejecting her, it's not going to help temporarily uh so like for the next few days it's gonna be rough i mean things like that can take like months to get over so yeah that that episode definitely definitely hit hard but i'm still really enjoying this game um and you know you gotta have some sad moments in a good story i mean not everything can be sunshine and rainbows what is this a children's story hell no right it's gotta have ups and downs and this this episode was really very very down 
and I still feel like we are now we are in the Looney Tunes part where we're falling, but the acceleration because I'm a nerd, I took physics, okay. The acceleration hasn't been too hard to where like I'm I'm like absolutely plummeting through the sky. But I'm definitely falling at this at this point in the story. We're definitely off the cliff. And yeah, the festival. This should be interesting. I can't wait to play the uh the next uh, this part of the story. Can't wait to make a video for it uh, about it for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I I think I'm getting a lot more comfortable with doing voices and um my commentary on things feels a lot more genuine and not like forced. And I think my I mean my reading skills have improved obviously because I haven't I feel like I haven't been stumbling as much and when I do stumble I just you know get past move on past it which is what you're supposed to do. So I think I'm improving a lot. Hopefully my editing has improved as well. And I'll see you guys later for the fourth video of Doki Doki. Peace out.